Welcome to Server Lab. In this video tutorial, we're going to show you how to use Packer to create your Ubuntu uh, Vagrant image. Uh, the, the version of Ubuntu that we're going to use for this is 18.04, so the very latest, uh, depending on when you're watching this video. So, to begin, uh, Packer has a JSON file where you basically you have a few sections. You have uh, what are known as the builders, and this is what's going to create uh, your virtual box images, uh, maybe your AWS AMIs, even VMware. There's a, there's a bunch of options here, but uh, so there's your builders. For this tutorial, we're doing Vagrant, and for Vagrant, we're, you need virtual box, and uh, so that's what we have here. Uh, going down, we have a list of provisioners. Now, uh, provisioners are your shell scripts, maybe your Ansible playbooks, possibly your chef cookbooks. Uh, anything that's going to configure the server once the operating system is uh, installed. And lastly, uh, this is an additional step required for Vagrant. We have our post processors section. Uh, as you can see, we have a type, Vagrant, that's our target. We're going to give it a compression level because a, the the image we're using is for vagrant is going to be compressed and that's just to save storage um, and finally an output we're going to output this into our output directory and give it the name ubuntu 18.04.box uh, that path is uh, relative to our json file so if we look up here there's our output that's the directory that's where we'll find it uh, when it's done all right, so let's get started and try to understand what it is this file does and everything. Um, so as we said before, here's your type, virtualbox-iso. That just tells Vagrant, we're gonna create an ISO and it's going to be done in virtualbox. So it will kick off a virtualbox instance. Uh, <clears throat> the ISOs are listed here. Uh, this is where we tell Packer, what CD, what ISO to mount, and we're going to actually um, grab the ISO from online. But you can actually, from what you, as you can see, there's you, it's an array of uh, items that you can add. So one of them is if we had an ISOs directory, uh, we would put an ISO in there and we would target that. If that file didn't exist, we have a second entry. And that's just going to pull it down directly from the Ubuntu website. Of course, we want to make sure that our image hasn't been modified. It doesn't have any uh, malware in it, you know, rootkits, you have it. So we want to validate the ISO checksum. Uh, and we're, gonna, we're specifying here, we're using uh, SHA-256. And this is the value that the ISO for Ubuntu should have when we perform a checksum against it. Um, so Packer will do that automatically. If the checksum they calculate is different from what we enter here, uh, the, the whole process will actually fail, which is good. It's exactly what you would want and expect. Um, because this is Vagrant, we need our Vagrant users and uh, we need to set the Vagrant password as Vagrant. Um, pretty typical if you're used to creating uh, Vagrant uh, boxes manually. Um, SSH port, so this is just for um, setting up the port, default 22, pretty basic. And timeout, wow. Now, you'll notice that there's a huge amount of seconds for your SSH timeout, and there's actually a good reason for that. Um, <laughs> Packer needs to provision your server uh, after it's up and running, but it's got to wait for it to be up and running before it can do anything. Uh, that is what this is. We essentially are giving it 10,000 seconds to install the operating system, uh, bring it online, and then allow a login prompt, which uh, Packer will then log in and do your provisioning. Um, shut down. Once everything is done, we're going to shut it down, and then that's when we package the actual image. And a few additional areas. You have your guest editions. We want to make sure that VirtualBox guest editions is installed. Uh, there's some performance enhancements and other doodads that are available, and it's definitely something you want to be doing. Um, of 
course, with Vagrant, you could always just stand up a VM, uh, a, sorry, a box without virtual uh, box guest edition, and you can actually tell Vagrant to install automatically, but that's neither here or there. Um, the VM name. So this is going to be the name. If you were to open up uh, VirtualBox and watch the process as it's happening, this is going to be the name uh, you'll see. Uh, this is a totally optional step. You don't need to do this. Um, Vagrant will actually assign its own name. Um, so irrelevant. Uh, where it comes into play is when you actually want to use this as a variable in other places. Uh, and you can pull that information in. And here we go, uh, VBox Manage. So VBox Manage is basically, we're going to tell the VM to our virtual box that we want this VM to have uh, one CPU, so one core, and assign it uh, 1024 megs of RAM. And that val those values are actually going to be dependent on what you're actually trying to accomplish. If you are if you're trying to create an image of for an application that requires four gigs of RAM out of the box, well, uh, you, that's a little too small. So you definitely want to go in and change that. Uh, for us, this is just basic. Um, we're just going to create a vanilla Ubuntu 18.4 uh, image, nothing special, uh, with the idea that anyone who uses this image is then going to bump up the system resources and then install whatever applications or services they want um, okay so now provisioners we have two shell scripts um, possibly in another video we'll probably go through ansible you definitely want to understand and use configuration management for this kind of thing uh, shell scripts work but when you're trying to create consistency between environments uh, you definitely want to start looking at um, ansible or chef or puppet um, you, you want to make sure that, like, the whole idea of Vagrant is let's make sure that we are running operating systems that are s almost nearly identical to what we have in production, right? And how do we do that? Well, we make sure that the same configurations happen, and that's definitely why you want to use those tools. But for this demo, we're just going to use shell scripts. It's good enough. Uh, we have to, we have one in init, and then here's the command we're actually going to execute. To run the command, uh, the script, and basically we need to use our user vagrant, and we need to do sudo because we're going to do some administrative things like uh, make sure the latest packages are installed. Um, as, uh, once they're all that's completed, uh, we're going to do a cleanup, and cleanup is just going to remove any temporary files, any packages that are no longer needed. Um, we're also going to shrink some of the storage and just make sure that we can make this image as compact as possible uh, because we're gonna we want people to download it and we don't want them to be sitting there for uh, hours uh, and maybe this is something you're going to publish up into the vagrant uh, image repository and so definitely you want to be uh, nice to everyone who's going to download your image and have as small an image as possible and then lastly I mentioned this before your post processors we want a vagrant box. We want to make sure the compression level is high. And here's the output name. Okay, so one thing I didn't go over, and it's actually in your uh, boot command, is you have this pre-seed configuration file. And what this is, is basically uh, an automated way of installing Ubuntu. So it's going to select all your options for you, what packages to install, uh, your network settings, storage, whether you're going to create new volumes uh, or just a single volume, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, that is what's in this file and you can see that we're it's an HTTP request, right? Well, don't worry, you don't have to set up a web server for this. Packer's going to do that automatically. Um, and that's basically what this is. It's telling Packer to use its own HTTP IP and uh, port and then pull the pre-seed configuration file. And you might be asking yourself now, well, where's this file located? Well, we have an HTTP directory up here, uh, and that's where you're going to store these things. Um, and there's our pre-seed config. So opening it up, there you go. Here's our options, right? Uh, we want to set the clock, UTC. Uh, you could use whatever time zone you want. Feel free to change these. Um, just everything that Anything that you wanted automated, you could. And if you don't understand how to automate certain parts, 
that we don't list here. Ubuntu has a great documentation uh, available and we'll possibly link that in our written tutorial for you to uh, easily find. Um, all right, so that's it. That's our file, pretty simple. Uh, and now let's, uh, let's run this thing. Okay, so Packer, we use the build command and then we point to the actual JSON file we wanna use. This is beneficial because we might have different configurations for say Ubuntu and then one for CentOS, uh, whatever else, right? And maybe we have different types of roles for those services. So we'll want to split it out even more. Uh, so it's uh, fantastic that you can select whichever one you want to use. Okay, we're going to kick it off. As you can see, we're downloading the ISO. I already did, so it's already found it. I want to save us some time. Uh, and now it's kicked off. They created the virtual box in server and it's kicked it off. So now we'll watch as the magic happens and it automatically installs everything for us. There you have it. Uh, we've just installed the operating system. Uh, you remember when we said we had to set, out, set up that 10,000 second timeout? Well, as you can see, an SSH connection was waiting to, uh, to, to be open. And we definitely want a long enough timeout to be able to download the ISO if that's what we're doing or uh, to actually go through the installation. Um, so now we're running through, we're doing an update for apt and that's completed and now we're installing packages after that uh, you won't see a whole lot but uh, until it's completed but then we're gonna do the additional steps that we wanted for cleanup uh, if if you were installing something like Apache, Nginx, whatever, MySQL you would see all that information here and you would see it run by so we're gonna let this finish and then we'll show you that the box when it's done and then uh, how to add it into Vagrant And there you have it, your own Ubuntu 18.4 uh, Vagrant box. Uh, so let's take a look. What did it create? Um, so we put our we we all put our boxes into our little output directory. So let's let's go in there. Right there's our image. Uh, as you can see, it's about 790 megabytes, which is uh, pretty small uh, for an OS install. Um, but, uh, so we want to add this to Vagrant. Um, how do we do that? Well, Vagrant has a very simple, very easy method of doing that. Um, and once you do this, you can actually reference your image from a Vagrant file. Um, so uh, let's add this to Vagrant. So use the Vagrant command uh, box and then add. And what we're going to do here is we're going to give our box a name. And this is the name that's going to be referenced in your virtual, I'm um, sorry, your vagrant file. Uh, so we'll call our server lab Ubuntu 18.04. Okay, and now we need to tell it where the box file is. So our box file is actually right there, very simple. Hit enter, and now it's being added. Uh, of course, uh, I have actually already added an image of the same name, so we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> use the force flag and uh, overwrite what we have. It's probably useful information to have if you're uh, creating your own boxes. You're probably gonna be overwriting several of them until you get things just right. So there you have it. Uh, our bigger box has been created, and we've added it to our local Vagrant uh, install so we can use it for whatever our needs are. And uh, there you have it. Uh, you have your own virtual box or Vagrant image. Uh, okay. If you liked this video, uh, make sure that you click the like button below. Uh, please feel free to leave any comments, any questions. We'll definitely get uh, someone to try to answer them for you. Um, and there you have it. I hope you enjoyed.